Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking to you about algae in the food industry, why we use it, the many applications of it, its limitations and its advantages over other products, and future projections for its implementation. First, what is algae? Algae are a very diverse group of generally simple unicellular or multicellular eukaryotic organisms. Most of them are autotrophic, which means that they can harvest carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and convert it to organic matter. They are excellent nutritional values since they contain complete protein, fiber, and high levels of omega-3 acids, as well as many vitamins and minerals. They are also a good choice for agricultural growth because they are highly adaptive to their environment and thrive by utilizing nutrients available in the water body. A high surface area to volume ratio gives algae the potential to absorb large amounts of light and nutrients across their surface, enhancing photosynthesis. Now, how are algal products made and grown? Algae is cultivated from both fresh and saltwater environments and grown in large vats when being produced for commercial use. They are cultured and characterized by microscopy and DNA extraction, sequencing and metabolite analysis is used to identify the best application for specific strains. Bioprocess engineering is used in facilities for algal cultivation and maximum lipid accumulation. Large-scale algal farms for mass production are located all over the world but most producers of commercial algal-based products are located in Asia or Australia and are showing an impressive growth, with the largest faculty being at Hutt Lagoon in Western Australia, where 740 hectares of algal ponds are being utilised. You might be wondering how widely algal-based products are currently being used. Some people may think they're only consuming algae in the obvious ways, like sushi or in their morning spirulina shake. But every day, algae is making its way into more and more aspects of the food industry. As early as the 1950s, Berlou proposed the use of algae for alternative protein sources to face global food demand. And in the 1960s, Japan started the first industrial scale production of the microalgae species chlorella for human consumption. By the 1980s, large scale algal production facilities were established in Asia, India, the US, Israel, and Australia. A big up-and-coming vegan substitute product that uses algae is Vegan Egg, which uses algae flour and protein from microalgae. And on their site, it boasts that the algae-based products contain healthy lipids, carbohydrates and micronutrients, as well as all the essential amino acids and are a great source of dietary fiber. Algae is incredibly multifunctional as it is found in a huge diversity of products. Cultivated microalgae and cyanobacteria such as spirulina and chlorella are sold as nutritional supplements. Hydrocolloids such as agar, alginate and carrageenan are isolated from wild and cultivated algae and are used as additives in the food industry for their emulsifying and thickening properties. It is also found in dairy products as a thickener, in foods such as shakes and mayonnaise as a stabilizer and emulsifier, wrapped around sushi, as a gelatin alternative to solidify food and even in your toothpaste. So you may be wondering, if algae is so great and diverse, why aren't we using it more? There are some limitations to its implementation in the food industry. Here are just a few. Firstly, to mass produce algae for products, we'd need large facilities for growth. Environmental impact assessment surveys have been used to assess the level of impact the construction of large-scale ponds would have, and a very real potential threat is that the construction of ponds for algae plant facilities could lead to the displacement of surrounding flora and fauna through destruction of habitat. There is also a limited understanding of nutritional composition across algal species, which can affect their dietary value and therefore their economic value. A lot of money would need to go into research to figure out the best use of different algal types and most efficient ways to grow them on such a large scale. Finally, there is the issue of potential atmospheric emissions such as carbon from the cultivation of microalgae in such huge quantities. The scale and detriment of these emissions is largely unknown, but the consensus is that emissions will occur and this needs to be taken into account when planning facilities. Despite all this, the push for an increase in algae-based food products should be considered due to its many advantages. For example, taken from the bottom of the marine food chain, algae can solve many issues in the way of energy efficiency and food insecurity as by being primary producers, no energy is lost to other trophic levels and eating it is much more sustainable than consuming the top tier predators that we are currently eating, such as tuna and salmon. 
Also, marine microalgae do not compete with terrestrial agriculture for fertile land, and growing it does not require fresh water. Secondly, global demand for algal foods is growing, and beyond the widely accepted nutritional and health benefits, it has been found that algae has many bioactive components that promote optimal health in humans, and could even help lower cholesterol in humans, and has been linked to the prevention of metabolic and inflammatory diseases. Finally, it has been argued many times that large-scale accumulations of microalgae could increase the natural fixation of CO2 via photosynthesis. A number of studies have demonstrated the scale at which microalgae can contribute to carbon uptake from the atmosphere, and people remain optimistic that this could significantly lower the negative effects of man-made climate change. All in all, mass production of algal-based products seems an attractive food alternative in the way of both health and sustainability. From a research perspective, biotechnology will play a major role in the near future, especially in production systems, as it can contribute to increasing the productivity and reducing the production cost of microalgae products. Governments and private companies are currently dedicating large investments to stimulate the biotechnological approach on microalgae. With genetic engineering, scientists can develop algae that grows faster and wards off deadly bacteria. They can create algae that produces more oil for biofuels or in the case of the food industry, have a more nutritional value. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you learned a little something today and that this video further sparks your interest into the wonderful world of algae.